Terima kasih pengurusi majlis, doktor. Yang berbahagia Datuk Seri, Datuk Datuk, Datin Datin, Tuan-Tuan, Puan-Puan, para hadirin sekalian. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. I'm very uh, good uh, afternoon. Uh, being the last speaker at almost one o'clock and the lunch is around corner. I try my best to make this uh, presentation work for all of us. Uh, as also uh, related to the earlier speakers, uh, speaker number one, two, three, and four, actually uh, I will simplify this uh, presentation because this is more on the use case uh, of what they, uh, they have been uh, presented today. Because when we want to talk about data and parameter, uh, speaker number one have uh, presented it, and approach analysis, uh, speaker number two and three uh, also have presented it, and for the way forward, uh, it is speaker number four who presented. So I won't elaborate uh, uh, due to the time constraint, but I will uh, uh, share with you the use case that we use for this uh, a disaster hazard, uh, hazard uh, uh, for national uh, risk management uh, uh, and also preparation of the emergency action plan. And I would like to, uh, I would like to also uh, acknowledge uh, uh, JPS uh, Drainage Irrigation and, uh, uh, Department. Also, is a very uh, helpful in this, uh, and uh, most of the products is uh, belong to JPS, yeah? and we are just a consultant for uh, JPS. Okay. The title of my presentation is highlighted uh, here is the view of the pre-plan and also preparation of better national risk management uh, and also emergency action plan through integrated of two-dimensional model uh, and also just partial based approach like I've been presented earlier by the, uh, all other speakers. And uh, we look into the theme of environmental sustainability which is very close and related to people well-being and also disaster uh, natural disasters is one of the most dramatic impact on the world in terms of both human and also economic costs. So in my presentation, uh, I will uh, highlight some approaches, uh, which is I will simplify it, uh, use case yeah, uh, for the flood, uh, practices and also opportunity in leveraging uh, geospatial technology in this topic related to NGMP because we also uh, in charge uh, for the project management of NGMP. As you can see here, in terms of that, um, flood is stated as a very uh, high frequency of the disaster hazard in Malaysia and uh, it is also talk about the uh, sustainability and other factors such as economic and mortality of that. Yeah? Uh, and there is a cycle of risk management when we talk about prevention, uh, mitigation, uh, cover, uh, preparedness, uh, respond and recovery, which all relate and need hugely uh, data from spatial to, co to uh, combine it with the non-spatial data. So this is the a thing that we are proposing and also we are preparing uh, in terms of prepare emergency action plan or known as EAP. What is EAP? EAP is a, form, a formal document that identifies potential emergency condition. When we talk about potential uh, condition, it may not happen or it is something that very uh, prediction, uh, but we have to be aware that there are potential to happen and specified pre-planned action uh, to allow to, for, to minimize loss of lives and properties damage. Yeah? Uh, this morning we talked uh, about hazard and also risk. Uh, we know that for the risk, it is the probability to happen times the damage and then that is the risk. So, uh, and also, last, uh, it is highlighted that Malaysia in what ranking in the risk? Uh, as we come uh, as a country that develop and urbanize, so we have to prepare sustainability uh, environment uh, where in here, without proper management of land, we will, the, the, the risk of our, our country will be in the higher ranking. 
Okay. And here, for the prepare, pre-plan and coordination of necessary uh, action, it is really neat, the collaborative approach, uh, where all the stakeholders, especially the owner of that particular structure that can trigger the emergency, such as them owner, and also the responsibility local, state and federal authority, to provide timely notific- notification, warning and evacuation in the event of an emergency. Yeah, and uh, second is to reduce, uh, like I mentioned earlier, risk of loss of life and the uh, property damage. Okay. So, what is in the uh, methodology itself? Yeah. Uh, then, in the two D or the integrated uh, hydrodynamic or two D model, one D, two D or three D simulation and geospatial based approach can improve both risk management and preparation of emergency action plan because through this exercise we can obtain more added value and also more detailed parameters yeah uh, as mentioned earlier so many parameters that we can develop and to to ensure that the information we get is timely and accurate uh, so the result can be documented in hydrodynamic and thematic simulation or animation and this can help us to classify the obtained parameter and identify the affected area uh, as well as a safe area in preparing hazard risk map and also EAP document. So this approach will enhance effective of risk management. Some illustration on, on the process of interchange, interface, and integration, where in these two um, directions, uh, processes will help in terms of uh, preparation of EAP document. And as you can see also how uh, the in- geographic input or information and engineering information is very useful to be combined together to create as a uh, input or preparedness of the risk management plan yeah? through uh, data and also spatial analysis. Okay. And I take the use case for uh, dam break and also flood here. As you can see here, there are nine steps of preparation of EAP and the one that highlighted in yellow is the, the, the step that need or required a hugely geospatial based approach. Yeah? Starting from the observation of the site uh, until the collection of the data and also the processes of it. That uh, means in the step one, to determine the potential emergency condition and in that indicted area, it's need all the analysis that have been presented earlier. You, you can see that so many models that they, they are using from the weather itself, from the groundwater model, from the land uh, surface uh, information that to be combined with the uh, mathematical, mathematical and computational information and finally when we get up uh, we get the output of it only we can go to the uh, step two I would say that this is the downstream part of the upstream that they have presented earlier yeah? uh, then in step two is preparation of the inundation map and step three is identify the triggering event and specify action to be taken. And uh, step four, five in the uh, identify the good communication system where even though it is like the communication only, but it has to be related to the social um, profile all around the affected area and we also list the prioritization of people and produce the notification flow because there is different scale according to the arahan yeah, my mkn 20 if the the thing happen in only one district and it is it is affected one district so it is different level compared to the one that may be more district and involve uh, more than one state yeah uh, then uh, preparation of the EA, uh, dra- uh, draft EA, EAP. Why we name it as draft? Because we need to validate with the, uh, all the responsibility uh, authority that we 
uh, that related in in the in the uh, area itself. We call it in the river basin itself, and. Also, we have to test it, even make a tabletop exercise and simulation on that particular event. But here, I, I, I think that for the simulation uh, where we uh, simulate the people evacuate, I think the practice that I have gone through is only uh, with BG, uh, BGSP uh, in last year when they do the operation of that and practice the simulation. So this is a very good exercise that we have to practice in Malaysia to ensure that by having this kind of uh, practice, it can reduce the loss of life and also damage. For example, during my study in Holland, um, in one of my class, yeah, yeah, uh, we, are wait, uh, we were waiting for lecturer to come, but then the lecturer cannot come and I mean, uh, tell us that, I'm sorry, uh, we have to cancel the class, the lecturer cannot come. Because the lecturer wrongly take the train and that train is involved in that simulation. So the one that, the passenger that, that in the train have to go through all the simulation route that they, they, they have for that exercise. So this is a good awareness. Yeah? Uh, every month they have... Uh, they have a practice of have this drill in all the building because, as you know, Holland is negative uh, six meters below sea, so it is very crucial for them. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is also a simplified, and I won't I won't explain detail, but uh, showing that on the left is the flow chart of how to com compute or uh, how to prepare the emergency action plan. While at the right is the list of uh, processes that we have to to do for the overall methodology of this 2D uh, geo uh, spatial based model for preparation of uh, EAP. And I will show you uh, some of the animation yeah, uh, for this 1D model. Even though the presentation is about 2D, but the preparation of 1D as an input to the 2D model. Yeah? Uh, Bismillah. Yeah, uh, I know, uh, sometimes I have this problem uh, where I have to adjust it to duplicate. Uh, just tick for others. Okay, yeah. you can see that. Okay, I can explain this. Uh, this is a longitudinal section of a river. Yeah? And, uh, okay. Not here. And it shows that the 1D model and the longitudinal section of the river. And this is the river bed, the line there. And blue is representing uh, water or discharge, water level. And uh, the, this one representing the left bank and right bank of the river. And as you can see, if I uh, play it again, uh, it shows that uh, this is the... Uh, dam area at the upstream part of it, somewhere in here. And when the dam breaks, it triggers, and you can see how many meters of it, and it reaches somewhere in PWTC area, and flow to downstream to the Port Klang area. So from this, uh, we will simulate it into 2D to show the inundation of uh, this in, in terms of 2D to know which area is affected. Yeah? For this 2D model, we combine it between uh, the, the uh, dam break at the fair uh, weather, means that no rain, or in the other scenarios, such as dam break with the uh, heavy rain, or maybe the severe dam break. So, as you can see, that this is the originate of it, and how he traveled it until the Klang, uh, uh, Jalan Klang Lama area here, and timely showing how long it will reach into that area. Yeah? So uh, from there, we can see the legend here show the depth of water. And just imagine uh, from the, the area that originated happened about this event uh, to that uh, 
area nearby, it may take less than 30 minutes. Yeah? So how then uh, if we have a very un inefficient notification and you can imagine that it is a, a huge and massive damage as well as a loss of life. Yeah? Never mind. Uh, then I will show you another one when we also cannot open. Okay, never mind. Uh, when we combine this and also make it as a visual to the 3D model, so it will show that how, how, how then it becomes uh, more accurate and uh, we can uh, interpret it better for the preparation of, uh, yeah, uh, for the preparation of uh, plan that we will make in the next processes. Okay. Uh, this is the example of the, the inundation area in Kota Tinggi for the real flood in 2007. And in, in here we can show and we can calibrate it based on demarcation that have been done uh, practically during that particular event. And it is also show other parameters such as velocity and also the flow propagation. Yeah? And uh, the, other, the other one is the, the 3D, but uh, a bit due to the time constraint, I think I proceed with the uh, next presentation on the geospatial approach. Okay. For this geospatial approach, we need that kind of information because the, the thing we need is to interpret the result that we got to make uh, very useful information for the operation side. Yeah? And uh, this is uh, some parameters that uh, we can extract it from the uh, mathematical or numerical or 2D model that we simulate based on cases that we would like to present it. Yeah? And uh, some extracted information that uh, we can classify based on our own uh, indices. Yeah, not uh, something that may be from overseas, that one also that is one only for the uh, calibration or verification purpose, but the real condition and customize it uh, based on the river basin um, uh, characteristic of uh, our uh, uh, event uh, or the, uh, the, 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 the thing that occurred. Yeah? And also to to have or design the degree of flood risk and the evacuation uh, zone uh, for that, that I will show you how then uh, that another cases that we have run in, uh, in one of the catchment uh, in Malaysia uh, on the flood hazard, and it shows that the scenario that we can predict it uh, sh uh, will show the, uh, the spread of uh, water uh, in the basin itself and we have to check on the parameter that we extract from the result itself, for example, the distance from that, the, the flood, uh, maximum flood, the velocity, uh, the wave that arrived at that time, how long is inundated, and also the peak water level that, that uh, occurred in that particular uh, location yeah? uh, here. Okay. And also, we classify it as zone, as mentioned earlier. The area that uh, near by the triggering factor, such as here, is dam, is of course in the zone number one. That sometimes we cannot wait. Uh, uh, the uh, the event occurred, but we have to give a pre uh, notification before it occurred. Yeah. And uh, some examples of flood risk that we make it in, in one of the town here, showing that with all the information, we, we have this data. Yeah? And for this last step of that, how then this step uh, should be processed? Once we detect the event, and we have to cast, uh, classify it whether it is in, in level one, two, or three, because from that we can specify what is notification and what action to be done, such as monitor, uh, save uh, the, the dam, or save the, the people. So that's uh, about that before we decide to terminate the, the, the thing. Yeah? 
So and in I finally, so long, they'll be gone minute, yeah, okay. yeah. In finally, it, it's as can be said that this is really enhancing, yeah, and enhancing evaluation in term of that and the opportunity that we have here. Uh, we see that NGMP is talk about innovation and collaborative. Uh, the data, the better uh, to support, and also they have a strategic plan for that. And we know that uh, this is the index of inno innovation where we are left behind on the application. And this is where you have to really use the thing that we do today for the better innovation uh, tomorrow. Yeah? Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you.